Welcome to Asset TV. Global markets took a hit with oil prices and bond yields sliding. The coronavirus outbreak is raising concerns about the economic impact around the globe. Now, is the 11-year bull market in jeopardy? I'm joined by Milton Azradi, Chief Economist at Vested, and he'll weigh in. Milton, great to have you here today. Pleasure to be here. Well, first and foremost, let's talk about what we're seeing around the globe. Oil prices are down, and we know that there's plenty of fear, and that's affecting prices in the global equity markets. So what do you make of where we go from here? <laughs> well, I wish I knew. Uh, the thing that's affecting the market is the unpredictability. Uh, we were talking earlier, and I think it's worth saying that the virus we get the, the influenza virus that comes every year to the Northern Hemisphere uh, actually has infected more people than the COVID-19 and is actually has a higher lethality rate than COVID-19. And yet we're afraid of that virus and that's because we don't know. We don't know how it's transmitted. We don't know exactly what the ultimate effect is. And fear or uncertainty is what affects markets, whether they're for oil or stocks or bonds. Mm -hmm. And Milton, when we look at what we've been seeing around the globe in terms of oil prices or equity prices, we haven't seen these sharp sell-offs in quite a while. So given all the reaction we're seeing, do you think recession risks are around the corner or we shouldn't be concerned about that? Well, as I say, when you don't know, you, there's always a reason to be concerned. Uh, my take on this is if the market's behavior in the last few days and weeks is an indication of the future, if it's an accurate portrayal of the future, then we have bigger things to worry about than our portfolio. And so I'm betting effectively that the market is wrong and that there is not, not as much need for this concern as is built into prices today. And Milton, I'd like to talk about stimulus measures. We know that the federal government is considering stimulus measures, but in addition to that, the central bank cut by an emergency 50 basis points. And as we head towards the March meeting, there are expectations of 50 basis points, if not a 75 basis point coming up. But what do you expect to see out of all of the uh, global central banks as we head closer to that date? Well, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. There's nothing else they could do. If I were a central banker, I'd be doing the same thing. The attitude is uh, we have to do something. Uh, the economies of the world, China is probably in recession now, although the official statistics will never admit that. Um, other countries like Japan are probably going to see negative growth. Many European countries will. The United States had a little more economic momentum going into this, so unless it really falls apart, we'll probably eke out a positive number. But So there's, there's concern there. But the virus is a supply problem. It's a supply of labor, not, not because people are sick, but because they're afraid to go to work, or they're closing down factories, or they're shutting down travel. Um, it, that's a supply problem, and cutting rates doesn't help that. Uh, fiscal stimulus doesn't help that. Uh, now, ultimately, if that would have knock-on effects and we would go into an old-fashioned recession where we had demand problems, then this stimulus would matter. If I were at the Fed now, I'd be saying we need to cut the rates on the possibility that this turns into a normal cyclical demand-driven situation and then we're ready for it. But right now for the virus, this is a, a, a gesture, that's all. Mm -hmm. And I want to take a step back and take a look at what we're seeing in oil prices. We know that both WTI and Brent futures uh, tumbled over the weekend as we headed into the week. But can you give us a better understanding of why we're seeing this in oil right now? Well, to some extent, oil is, 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 is reflecting the same thing uh, as stocks, just the general fear. There are two other things for oil, is that some of the biggest oil users in the world, China, is in recession. And I think the only people who won't admit that is the government in Beijing. Um, and so there's going to be a cutback in the demand for oil. And of course, this has affected travel most of all. And so the demand is down and they're cutting back. Now the Saudis are also increasing production and that it hasn't happened yet, but the anticipation of that is adding to the pile on oil and driving the prices down. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, before I let you go, Milton, I know that we can't predict the trajectory of this outbreak, but do you think the 11-year bull market, the longest bull market in history, is in jeopardy or already is over? Well, it's certainly possible. 
um, and anything is possible. Um, I would say this, the uh, influenza epidemic of 1918, 1919, which killed many more people than the whole First World War, ended in the summer of 1919. It ran its course and it didn't cause much of an interruption in the great boom of the 1920s. So I would say, I'm not saying this is a buying opportunity because we live in uncertainty, but I would say that the chances are this will be exa is exaggerated or will be exaggerated before it's done. And whether it ends this bull market would depend on if it really generates a worldwide recession. And there I have my doubts. Okay, Milton. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for all of your insights. A pleasure to be here. And thank you for watching. I was joined by Milton Azradi, Chief Economist at Vested. From our studios in New York City, I'm Emmy Blair for Asset TV.